This is how I live. I live. This is what I love. Oh. This is all the things that my dreams have been made of. Welcome to my life. This is what I love. This is what the soundtrack to my life is made of. Music love life. Crystal Jordan, be honest in myself, Mr. Kevin. We are Music Love Life. Welcome to another episode. <laughs> I'm not used to it yet. So you're, you're, <laughs> you're Mr. Kevin, like, the rest of us, you don't, Mr. Be Honest? No. M- m- he just, didn't ask just, to be, he, he's Be Honest. He don't, he, he yeah, not, so it doesn't Mr. Come with a Mr. Be Honest? Mr. Crystal? That's <laughs> too much. <laughs> okay, pretty much. Right. There's too much dip on the chip. <laughs> yeah. That's cool, though, Mr. Kevin. I'm not sure he's I feel He's rebranding himself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's up? What's up? I don't know. Uh, a year and a half into the season, he's just just throw it out there, just Mr. Kevin. Do we have to call you Mr. Kevin? Please say the Mister. <laughs> Please say the yes. You, you, you don't have to say the Mister. Have you have you retired? Big you Kev? say the Mister. Oh what? yeah, it was have you Big retired? Kev? Big Kev is that retired or? Uh, yeah, yeah. Really? Big Kev is retired. Okay. Big Kev okay. is retired. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I get that. I think that is more fitting. What about Muy Bueno? Mm, it was cool for a spell. Okay. This is, oh, this he is, does this. This is his thing. He yeah. rebrands. No, this is this is the like more mature, distinguished Kevin, Mr. right? Mr. Kevin, yeah. Correct, yeah. yeah I okay. feel that. I feel that. I think Muy Bueno was just like wilding out. Like, he just, I'm here in Atlanta. I'm got lots of hoes. I'm just wilding out. Yeah, Muy Bueno hadn't figured it out yet. Yeah. You had a lot of hoes? He, yeah. was, he was talking a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I think he just challenged you. That, right that there. wasn't my... That was a challenge. That, that wasn't my that higher was, self. That wasn't a challenge. I haven't always been... I haven't always ascended. Okay. I haven't always been my higher self. Have you... Uh, so... It's you, unfortunate. Was... Uh, were, when did you become a hotep? Was that me bueno? Was it, was it in the transition it was, or... I don't think it was a choice. Okay. I, th- I think it chose it me. It chose you. Yes. Okay. Hey. I, I think it, it chose me. <laughs> It came to me in a dream. I love it. Yes. Well, you became, you know, in touch with your higher self. Mm. <laughs> high, high from weed. <laughs> yes, definitely. Is that a part? Is that your? Is that is that a What's part? What's wrong of with weed? Religion? No, See, here I just go. don't know that. I just know here that hotepetry ho- is <laughs> is a higher line of thinking. I'm well, not it's sure. Largely based in uh, marijuana. Uh, is it? I think so. Yeah. Uh, all the hoteps I know are are big. Um, believers in the baseless claims <laughs> prophecy of of the Mary Jane. Hey, 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 hey! Don't we're not associated with Jesse? <laughs> How dare you? No, he's not. I demand respect. <laughs> <laughs> Have you noticed that that's kind of just gone away? It didn't go away to me. I, I, I'm still thinking it's hilarious. <laughs> he's a household no, name. No, it is hilarious. It is absolutely hilarious. He's famous, sir, for it. He is famous, sir. I don't know if he's gayer and blacker, but he's definitely famous, sir. No. Yeah. Not blacker or gayer. It's definitely yeah. uh, <laughs> clowner. Bless his heart. I mean, that is got that is the worst. He's a buffoon. That is the worst thing to get ca- caught in a lie trying to get sympathy. Like that is the worst way to go down. Has, has he been donkey of the day since it came out? I'm sure. I'm sure. Probably I'm more certain. than once. Yeah, I'm sorry. He might be donkey of the week. Yeah, maybe the the quarter. Yeah. That was bad, man. I, I uh, that was rough. That's rough. It is like you look at him and you just hear, wah, wah, yeah, I just wah, feel bad wah. for him because that's such a bad lie. I don't feel bad for him. I do. I do feel bad for him because that, that's a, just a stupid lie. Like, he should have consulted somebody. Not at all. I don't feel bad for him at all. That is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. But, but why would he do that? Like, like, why would you talk why yourself would someone into a do that? Well, it's not even a, 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 a embarrassment. Like, it's, it, it is... It's really hard to, like, be taken seriously. I know we have, you know, people forgive and forget and you mature, but... It would be really difficult for me to take someone seriously that that tried to stage a violent attack on themselves for a pay raise, like <sighs> or just attention, just right, the, the, right. The, the, the the publicity um, that comes mm-hmm. with being a victim, and and yeah, just getting more likes and stuff. Yeah. I but I do say this though, and I think you'll appreciate this, Crystal. Okay. I know that Kevin will. I <sighs> don't think that he should serve a day of jail time unless right. they get that Emmett Till bitch too. Oh. I don't. I don't. Eh, uh, eh, I don't feel that those way. Those are not the I same know. things. Though. They are to me. It's the exact same I, thing. No, it is the same thing. But it's I'm not exactly going to say that he thing. can't serve time because she don't. No, they nah, don't. Yeah, throw that's, his that's, ass in there. Yeah, her too. I. I mean, she go get her. But yes. she, throw his ass in there. No, no. no, no. She, that's I want different. Him to go. We got him now. He could go. It's different. He's though. ready. 
She was a part of civil a civil rights tragedy where someone was killed to- horribly. Right. He. No one has been hurt. That's the way, but the potential was there. The it could have started a race war. It could have started. Have. Mm-hmm. It could. It could have definitely started a it's straight gay thing. war. <laughs> definitely, it's had. the same thing. The, and the and the the only difference is that she admitted it. He still hasn't admitted. Well, that it. was after years and years. She and years. She got to go because she admitted it. I How want her gonna... to go, but I but I don't. I want her to go, but I think I think her crime is much worse because of the because of the actual ramifications of what happened. She still got to go. If you if you attempt to murder somebody, you still right. don't get the same punishment as if you actually are successful with the murder. Well, she didn't so, murder, but she did lie well, for she the murder. Well, she called, yes. Bill Cosby, they, when it got him they at did. 80 whatever, come they on, did. man. She got, she got to go, man. They did. Anyway, they did. I don't want to talk about that because that's upsetting. Yeah, and we did that. All, yeah, that's that's that's. Well, hard. we know justice is selective. But it, I think it always gets you. You could just be miserable. I mean, life, you know, karma does not miss an address. That girl hung a toddler in her basement and got probation. How do you hang a toddler? I don't even know that story. I don't Probably don't got to hang him very high. I, I, toddler. I don't know that story. I don't even know if I want to. I'm, I, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed with with um, sadness. Like it just is so much in our. We just are bombarded with so many negative things. And I think that you know we have to talk about. This was a rough ass Black History. It was but. really rough. It was just very <laughs> rough. Did people wait until February to to release these things? Or? Absolutely. You think it was by coincidence? Yes. That's what fucks black people up. I think that's what separates a lot of blacks from hoteps because y'all think it's a coincidence. We be like, you no, all no, are on a conspiracy these motherfuckers theory. are doing it on purpose. What, they know what they doing. What things? Jesse had nothing to do with white people. Yeah, Jesse. There, just, Jesse there were that se- pick one. There were several incidents. Like, well, of, he was a big disrespect one. against blacks. But no, February. it was from a black. It can't be against black if it's from a black. Mm-hmm. And I don't consider our Kelly uh, against the black either because the documentary was done by blacks against the black who was out of control and hurt other blacks. So that's really all Alleged, internal. Allegedly. Well, no, actually that was <laughs> take it. that was family business being handled. Right. So that was family so, business being okay, handled. So, I'm was not, a, so we're, but because white people during, didn't give a damn. But R. Kelly was like they no, weren't talking about that shit no on care. Good Morning America. Absolutely not. They so don't give a shit about R. Kelly. But they did because it caused so much. Once it became a trending. Well, topic, yeah, we were on social sudden, media. That's where all yeah. the black meetings happen. Is on social media. <laughs> it is black Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, vote now. We are part of the Black Caucus. Absolutely. So, so but how, how, who, are, who else? Because those two obviously had nothing to do with the conspiracy to have it happen right. during so Black History ask. Month. Mm-hmm. So who, what happened, what else happened that was a, a conspiracy of the man to put it during, to schedule it during Black History Month? What about the Gucci stuff? Gucci, uh, the, oh, the, the clothing thing? You think you don't think they plan to release this product Well, I don't February? think the product was released. In, I think that was a picture from something that didn't happen right then. It just happened to go viral right then. The, the, the sweater had been out for a while. So but it he's saying the... The, the, po- the, the publicity the hype of it. Of it. Yeah. Maybe, uh, no. Is that a coincidence? No, I mean, H&M was not placed during Black History Month. I mean, I, th- I, I just think it was bad luck. Mm. I think it was a coincidence. Is it how many times? How many times does something have to happen in a row for it to not be a coincidence? What happens in a row? row? (laughs) What row? What? Where are we starting the row? Where are we ending the row? <laughs> uh, well, I said Black History Month, so that no, means the no, first no, to the twenty eighth. But what happened? What other things have happened? Why are you that- making this more difficult? Because you're not giving did us did examples. Did something happen every twenty eight day? Uh, every day of the twenty eight days? If that, then there's a pattern there. Or is there a proof but that last year, all year 28, before? It takes all twenty eight days. No, to be I'm a pattern? Just twenty eight days. I'm just saying, did did last year bad things happen during Black History Month? The year before, I don't remember or anything just, like maybe this. Maybe just a little before February first, like maybe January thirty first, like Super Bowl around the Super Bowl time. Not not. It didn't slide into black history. I don't remember that this year was just a really bad luck. Well, you know, racism's always been there, but for some reason <laughs> it feels like, like, yeah, it's not like it was a new thing that just started up on the first. Like, the fuck was going on? Right. It, it, this is something that racism and, and acts of racism or, or hatred have been there for, for quite a while. <laughs> However, it just seemed like February stung for some three. But it did, there were reason. no acts of, of, of racism. It was uh, What do you mean us, no was, acts of racism? It was us just against a normal, us. Just a normal average everyday it was us everyday racism. racism. Yeah. It was yeah. just... It was because, normal. I mean, the biggest... The biggest cases were not. Are racist. we nor- are we normal? Are we that used to this? I'm shit? I'm saying there was yeah, no racism no. except for the Gucci situation. Nothing else was racism. I mean, it, it might have been sexism, or you know, but it wasn't racism. R. Kelly's documentary was not racism. It was again us against us for us. So I mean, that doesn't qualify. Jesse Small, that was that was racism, but the other way, the other direction. <laughs> it was. 
<laughs> and you know what? It was because he <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. blamed white people for doing it. And see, that's what that's happens, man. We bad. do it to ourselves. What about the, what about the prison reform and stuff? The lady got out of jail this month. Yeah. I don't, I don't, what are you talking about? February was a great month. A lot of great shit there happened. Were, there were some great things that happened. Yeah. The Oscars were very black. The Oscars, Spike Lee finally got one. Come there on, you man. Go. There You're you right. go. Some good stuff happened, man. But we're going to take okay. away a point because we acted out in a racist. With Jesse, it was us against them. <laughs> so we're going to take away a point. We are, exhibi- we, are, we are exhibiting racism ourselves. I wonder do white nationalists get extra mad on leap year because that's one more day of Black History Month. <laughs> you think they probably do? Mm. Well, mathematically, if, uh, if they are <laughs> ma- angry an equal amount <laughs> Each day, right, and there happens to be more days in a leap year. Then they would be right. Then then that scientifically would be more mad during Black History Month. (laughs) Oh man! Can't wait for that leap year. I never thought about that. You know, white people didn't say anything about it. About which thing? About the fact that Jesse accused them. You know, if it had been, did they? Did they? Yeah, yeah. I didn't hear them. What did your people say? They were were gays. Why did you say you're the only one that heard from them? What did they say? That was bad news for beige niggas. (laughs) No. Yeah, that was bad no, news. That, that was all on gay people. Isn't Honestly, he, that was that was a beige, he hey, beige niggas look bad. He, didn't he say, made beige niggas he, look he, bad. He, he, he didn't say beige Tupac. He said gay Tupac. He did. He did. We're <laughs> not taking that. Thank you. We'll pass. <laughs> no one would say beige Tupac. <laughs> Who would say gay but Tupac? But he said blacker. Be blacker. Be blacker. I'm like, but what are you He what fought are you the talking fuck about? back, Kevin. <laughs> beige people don't fight. <laughs> First of all, he said, "My body is." Strong. I knew he was lying. <laughs> like, did you listen to how he was telling the story? Like, he hit me in the face. <laughs> And then his ass back <laughs> Right No nigga Not at 2 a.m. Nigga if you got hit in the face You was knocked the, the fuck out In the bitter cold That is That's, not how fights go So if you are fighting In the bitter cold Like does the cold Ever factor in And then in we got into a tussle the fight? Who the fuck gets into a tussle <laughs> With two guys I seen a bunch of niggas fight I ain't never seen nobody Get into a tussle When it's cold I don't think there's much Punching at all Cause I mean the, the wind Is gonna just like yeah. Then you're yeah. cold What do you it hurts, and then it first, hurts you to punch somebody That's in the what I'm cold. saying It's not a lot of punching I thought the Chicago motherfuckers Shoot your ass I I, They have to Because I know the, they that the cold <laughs> that, The hawk The hawk that meets you out there You don't want to You don't want to do that Only gay people tussle, tussle I have, I have yeah. that feeling yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very That's a very gay ad, uh, ad, They were hit with the wrists and shit Let's don't be offensive guys That's not Let's offensive don't. Tussle that's that, 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 Come on offensive. Now, I'm yeah. just trying to get a clear definition Of what a tussle is I don't know why he said that I, well, it all worked into his story. What with the bleach and the, the noose. Well, I think it was a, a pretty average Black History Month. I, you know what I didn't hear? I didn't hear anything about Martin Luther King this year. That's <laughs> he actually didn't have positive. Time to get it. What do you mean you ain't hear nothing about I didn't, it? You know how normally you there's yeah. always a black there's like a black history moment and it'd be Martin Luther King. So there's a, I didn't hear any of that this year. I think they're finally learning that we don't give a fuck about Martin Luther King anymore. We get it. What? We no, we know that story. Okay, it's time to hear some other stories. There are, and we have so many. We have so many. We have so many other stories that um, you know, are equally as 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 impactful now. In fact, tell tell the listeners about the the guests we have, Kevin. We have another story, right? Right. So with us today, we have a, a, a great friend of mine. Her name is Keena Day. She Her latest book, Aphrodisiac, is available now on Amazon and everywhere that books are sold. So uh, let's take a moment and um, welcome Keena to the show. Welcome, Hi. Keena. How are you today? I am well. I'm in Houston right now. Traveled all day today. So just winding down. But yeah, I'm doing well today. Well, good, good. So tell us a little bit about uh, Aphrodisiac, uh, because the book just came out and it's already like doing a lot. So tell us what's happening here. Okay, I appreciate that. Um, And I appreciate you all having me on today. Thank you so much for this opportunity. You're Um, more than welcome. Aphrodisiacs is a collection of short works that really talks about Black love. Um, And Black love is a means of... um, Black liberation. I am an Africana womanist, um, which was coined by the professor Clenora Hudson Weems. And it's an ideology that's grounded in, um, you know, African culture and, you know, just focusing on the experiences, struggles, needs, desires of Africana women of the African diaspora. And there are a few components that she has within the ideology, which includes, um, family centeredness, role flexibility, and the struggle with males against oppression. 
Um, so she kind of starts a work that she has um, called Africana Womanism and Race and Gender and the Presidential Candidacy of Barack Obama. Her quote is, to be sure, strong bonds between Africana couples must be established in order that the Black liberation struggle be strengthened and therefore empowered. And then she cites the work of Dr. Haki Mahubuti, who reminds us basically that the liberation of Black people of white supremacy starts in the home. So I began the book off with that Nikki Giovanni quote um, that you probably saw in the Killer Mike um, trigger warning special um, called Black Love Equals Black Wealth. And not wealth in the sense of just money, but what a black family brings to a person and that type of wealth, you know, um, cultural or censoredness and things like that. So the book is centered around that idea and how black love is the beginning of us really strengthening our families. And the more, you know, black men and black women can really lock together and build strong families, the better we're going to do against uh, white oppression. So I start the book off with just talking about love itself and giving poetry about the different ways that Black love looks, you know, in terms of cleaving to your husband through marriage, submission between both parties, not a one-sided thing, but in Africana womanism, it's a two-sided thing. Um, You know, having great sex with a man, you know, having intimacy, having relations, thinking about how a man pushes your thinking and just having those types of pieces to kind of get people to understand what the different ways Black love looks. But with this idea of oppression, I kind of wanted to then dig a little deeper into what actually have broken the bonds between black men and women. And so in the second part of Aphrodisiacs, I really look into the history of black love and the different things that have happened starting in Africa that were used to break down our love ships and, you know, trying to give some solutions on how we can fix that. So an example would be you know, lynchings, um, passing stories. Also, this idea of so many of our um, Black uh, leaders, such as Martin Luther King and Fred Hampton and so on and so forth, Megar Evers, them being killed and taken away from their children and from their wife and what that did to them. And a lot of times we do not look at what happened to the wife and how that really affected their family's lives. So, I did some stories about that and just wanted people to really understand that these this is the part of history that is not taught to us and how, you know, the system has really been designed to break us apart from the very beginning since 1619 since we've been here. And so I really try to break those things down and then build us back up by giving some strategies from throughout history that have worked um, among our people to help build our family. So that's what the book is about. (laughs) I know that was a mouthful, but that is what aphrodisiacs is about. Awesome, awesome. So let me ask you this, because especially in terms of black relationships, like we, I, male and female interactions, I think clearly there's been some, uh, there's been some strife. I mean, you can see it on social media, and 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 it's become so much easier for someone to dip out in cheating. Um, things of that nature, like it's 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 almost cool to cheat right now. Talk to us a little bit about um, I don't know what what are some of the the things that you think that black men and, and women can do where they can come closer together. Well, that is pretty interesting, isn't it? I always <laughs> say this like kind of tongue in cheek, but you know we are people of polygamy, and a lot of the. <laughs> A lot of the slave people who were, <laughs> I'm being so for real. Like, me too, I'm me too. Being funny, okay? I didn't I'm see so that serious. coming, sister. And what I'm going to say is really probably off the chain, but listen, listen to me, okay? Listen, most of the slave tribes that, well, most of the sl- tribes that were made slaves, let me say it like that, um, Igbo, um, Yoruba, those are polygamist, like, tribes in America. I mean, in Africa, And so I just wonder if it just kind of runs in our soul just a little bit. And I also wonder if we did put some polygamy together right now, if that would definitely help our three to five generations behind the white man. But that's just me. I don't know. So you mentioned (laughs) you mentioned in your in your opening, you mentioned role flexibility. (laughs) The misogynist in me 
is is wondering what how a man has to be flexible in his role. Oh, what does that mean? So you don't think a man should, you know, you don't think that submission is a two way street? I'm asking what, what I, I'm asking you 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 opened with that, so I'm asking could you kind of just <laughs> <laughs> dig a little deeper into what you what you present in the book about role flexibility? Yes, um, I just believe that you know. Of course, in submission, ideally, it should be that a man is submitting to God and therefore the family comes under, you know, that submission um, and that the family kind of works together. But of course, a woman has needs. A woman, you know, nowadays especially has that idea of independence. So many women now are the heads of so many strong families that where does a man come in with that? And so we have to be really, really mindful of how that works. So if you have, say, two people working in the home, then a man cannot expect his wife to continue to do the same regular gender roles of what was expected of women from the 1970s, 60s, when most of them were housewives. It's, it can't be expected that that woman is going to do all the cleaning, do all the cooking, do all the rubbing, do all the stuff that, like she can't do all of those things and take care of all the children. And a man does not expect to give some of that. Right. Like, that's just not fair, and it's not something that's feasible in our day and age. So that's what that idea is about. If you just add another couple of women, I'm sure that, you know, then he can... <laughs> then it's going to be easier for uh, everybody. Absolutely. That's my personal Absolutely. thought. <laughs> absolutely. Somebody can do all the rubbing and sucking, and somebody can do all the cleaning. And yeah, take shifts. Somebody else can, and he gets... Take I don't think shifts. that he would have and to... And build your wealth. Okay? Absolutely. Not the, is that not the fastest way to build wealth? I mean, come on. I'm just, I I'm can just... think of a few other ways, but I mean, if that's what we're going with, I'm, I'm game. <laughs> um, what? He doesn't have and to I be flexible. And I say it tongue in cheek. I say it tongue in cheek. Because really, Kevin, I owe you a real explanation to your answer. And cheating is not cool. <laughs> and it's not the, you know, thing that we definitely should do. But at the end of the day, like it's it's this idea of hurt people being in relationships and not learning how to communicate and not learning how to, you know, express their feelings, especially because we suppress boys' feelings so much that they don't really even know how to emote a lot of times. Where instead of me going to the woman that I love, I'm going to go off to this really fast, you know, person over here to get me some fast gratification. Like, that's just kind of how things have turned in our society. And it just really starts in our homes of being able to break a lot of the chains of, uh, the, the chains of, like, People fit, you know, people's emotions and and people being abused. And stuff. It's easy when you don't value each other. It's easy mm-hmm. when you just some pussy, you mm-hmm. just some ass. But you do it out of hurt, and you don't you do it because you don't know how to communicate whatever upset that you have with that person. You know what I'm saying? Or you it's just like pussy, and you want some more. So I guess again, the polygamy works there. But I, I, I have a question, and going back to the first answer that you gave us with polygamy being an option. So I that is an option for men that cheat. But is there are women? Are, are is women it cheating? And <laughs> if everybody I guess agrees, women are not there. Well, it's no, it's not cheating. It's almost like we 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 allow men a pass to want more flavors than just one, but. Are women damned to hell if they do? I mean, do women have the ability to be in a polygamous situation where there are multiple men? Or are we just really going with mm. the old, you know, the the feminist? I have been asked that question mm. several times um, about women being able to do that. Mm. I don't think that the males eat. Um, but, you know, because technically it's a patriarchal society and that's basically how we live. And so... You know, because of how that breaks down, usually it favors a man instead and of every, a woman. Every but, time. I mean, there are women <laughs> who definitely have more than one man. Right. She and said, so, if you can handle I mean, it, it happens. If I I could give it to you, but what you gonna do with it? I think a lot of I think women could probably <laughs> I don't I think women could handle it uh, probably more than a man. I just don't I don't know if polygamy is a is a is a answer to cheating because then that that puts multiple women on one man, and I, I'm just I'm men are not always going to be able to sexually satisfy all those women. So a lot of times, I think in in those cultures, women are not necessarily supposed to be sexual beings. And we know that in African culture, a lot of African cultures, 
women's clitoris is most, like we're not supposed to have those desires. We're supposed to clean and cook and serve. And you're, you know, you're not supposed to be a whole woman. So I just, I thought we were kind of moving in a different direction, but maybe which which we're which, which not. direction you want to move in, Crystal? I just want to move in a direction <laughs> that we are able to heal and respect each other as whole persons. And I think that if women are open, and I don't have a problem with women that are open to that, but I think it definitely says if there's three of me, if three of me have to equal one of you, then we're definitely not equal and you definitely don't value me the same. And we definitely is that are what, not. Is that looking, what polygamy is though? That is definitely what polygamy is. I don't know is. that that's what polygamy is. But you know that's what? A lot on of, the other side I, of it. I mean, a lot of people have children from previous marriage or a baby daddy here or a baby mama there and so on and so forth. And so if you got two or three, y'all already polygamists. Nah. <laughs> Y'all, but y'all, you know, you'd you be true. surprised. Yes, there are it is. a lot y'all of already. people who actually practice polygamy, and it it works exactly that way. Sister wives got to call each other on kids' birthdays and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, y'all that's already. not practicing polygamy because that's not if you have a baby with someone and then you're not with them anymore. That doesn't mean that you're practicing polygamy. Polygamy. Yeah, is, no, that's not the same thing. Yeah. I'm saying that there are like real deal. Oh yeah. Well, you think, poly- you think about polygamy. You think about polygamy, and you say sex. I no. I just said if, if if you're really in a polygamous relationship, and the woman's not allowed to look elsewhere, because I mean there are a look lot of situations for like sex? for a penis, right? Right. But see, that's it's not. It, that's but, what I was trying to say. Just, I don't, but I don't we know just said that it was a sex but only. it was an opportunity for. To, to to curb the man's appetite to cheat. That's what we just... That's not the only thing, though. It's not the only thing. There was the group economics part yeah, of it. Yeah, but it's... it's there was yeah, the she com- was talking about a lifestyle, the lifestyle, not just... The community part of it as well. Yeah. It, yeah. It, I, <laughs> I'm not a, Does the sex foreshadow? We like, have to catch up on the white man. We are three to five generations under most circumstances behind the uh, white man. I just feel like that might be the case. If the women are making to, more money than men, and a lot of if there's you know a lot of women are in high positions and are doing really well, then to me, if we were trying to catch the white man, maybe the woman should have two husbands because a lot of them are making a lot more money than the men. I I talked to a couple. But think about it like from a, you know, think about it from a biology state. Like a woman cannot be pregnant by those two men at the same time. Exactly. But she shouldn't be if we're trying to catch up to wealth. That's why it works out more for a man to do it because he can have two women pregnant at the same time. It's not the same for a woman. And that's from what I understand from people who practice it, black people who practice it. Like, that is pretty much what the idea is. We're trying to have as many, he's trying to have as many kids as he can. You know what I'm saying? They're not moving towards wealth then. That's moving away from wealth. <laughs> moving away. <laughs> I, I interviewed a, 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 not a couple, it was five. It was five women and one man. And he worked at Delta. And they all worked at Delta too. And I would ask them why they were doing that. And, at, you know... A lot of, the, they were young and a lot of the women are like, oh, I just know he, someone that cares about me. I didn't have a family. I just don't, I don't know that they were moving towards wealth. They, everybody was working. Um, they were struggling. It just, I don't know that they were moving towards wealth, but, it, and then of course one dropped off and felt like, you know, she wasn't being loved. I, I mean, if, if a woman feels like she can be loved wholeheartedly with a man that shares her with four, with four of the women, more power to. Put, well, the women should love each other as well. Is Absolutely. And I would assume that they would need to be able to enjoy sex with each other, too, so that there could be some satisfaction. Because even though sex is not the only part, surely it does have to factor in. Sure. Mm. <laughs> who, who doesn't like sex, especially with multiple women? So here, here's the question I have for you. So you're mentioning mm-hmm. the, the three to five generations behind the white man. Mm-hmm. So I, I heard you also say that we are not taught these stories. But I think that why this book is powerful and why it's important is because it's not white people's responsibility to teach us this. It's our responsibility. And so that's why I applaud the book and I'm glad that we're going to get a chance to read it because it it is time for us to teach ourselves. I agree. I appreciate that. I think black love, I mean, black love is definitely something that we, you know, that I agree with that quote, black, um, black love equals black wealth. So that's not, and, and however you get it is, is great. I just think that, um, you know, I think we have to define, everyone has to define it in what they're comfortable with. And I don't think every woman is going to be comfortable with being in a polygamous relationship. But I do think some of the other things you talked about, because kind of like a mixture between like very traditional roles and then very progressive roles. So at one point it's like women are going to submit to the husband. And then it's another point it's like, you know, we're all going to work and we're all going to do this. So it's like, it's a mixture. And I guess you just kind of have to find your balance, right? 
Yeah, I will just say I was being tongue in cheek to Kevin's question about cheating. So there is I don't, um, you know, mention polygamy in the book at all, but it's really just a matter of building families up and us really educating ourselves in that area. And I really appreciate that. I think that a lot of times um, I really try to bring a lot of history that we don't talk about at all in school. I've been an educator for 15 years, an administrator for four And um, I'm also I have a master's in black lit from Tennessee State and and also did some studying at Fisk. So I've been able to go into the special collections that, you know, some of the Harlem Renaissance writers that collected at Fisk, such as Anna Bond Thompson, Robert Hayden. They kind of brought those things to Fisk and I was able to study from some of that. And what some people don't even know is that W.E.B. Du Bois like purposely structured the Harlem Renaissance. That wasn't something that just happened by accident, you know, and a bunch of black writers and artists and stuff came together and started pouring out to our society. Like he charged African-American writers with telling our stories of social justice. And then they all began to collect these um, journals that these stories were told from. So we have, we just don't know those types of things. Or Madam C.J. Walker, for instance, she received a loan from her her, uh, church to open her empire. Her Hmm. black church funded her. And then she paid that loan back once she got her first lick. So, I mean, a lot of people don't know that kind of history. And I just kind of propose a lot of those types of things so people really know, you know, this richness and this vast, like, untapped area of African-American history that is just not taught to us. And, you know, that was pretty much what the premise of the book was, because we are just a people of such a deep history. And Dr. Uh, John Henry Clark definitely reminds us of that. And I use a lot of his work. And I also tap into a lot of our master teachers. You know what I'm saying? Just Mm -hmm. making sure that we're listening to the people who told us this before, Dr. Carter G. Woodson and others, you know. So I really appreciate that. Now, that's 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 beautiful, because I think that will uh, you know, a lot of our young people have only seen the stories that, you know, are put before them in the media. And I think Martin when you Luther see, and, yeah, yeah, when you see yourself and you see the success and the ingenuity and just all of that, the creativity that was that was done intentionally, it, it, it empowers you and makes you feel, you know, that you have, that you come from something that is it's not shameful. Because a lot of times when, growing up for me, the most black history we saw was a lot of slavery. And after a while, when you're only mm-hmm. seeing those images, you start to connect with being ashamed of that. You know, I remember being mm-hmm. a, a black kid in an all white um, class and being very embarrassed at seeing those images and not knowing that there was another part of that history. So that's really important. See, mm-hmm. I'm almost proud. I think one day I'm going to get Crystal to be a hotel. <laughs> one of these days. If I can have two husbands, I'm all for it. I'm, I'm going to invite her to a meeting. <laughs> You got to get it to just be the hoe first. Then we get the tip. <laughs> <laughs> See, we ain't no good. Yo. Kina, thank you. Thank you for coming, yeah, y'all. This was you, amazing. I, I, and we'll, we'll definitely put the information up. That's, yeah. that's, well, that's but dope. Tell us how to, how to get the book right now. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, you can. We sold out on Amazon um, now twice. So wow, that's I'm awesome. really excited dope. about that. So, it, you know, word of mouth is spreading very fast. But it is available at Barnes & Noble. And also at Books a Million, and it will be on all indies such as Google Books and on ebook starting next week. So I'm really excited about that pushing out. So congratulations. That's huge to sell out on Amazon twice. That's that's huge. So congratulations on that. It's good to hear that people are picking up something of substance, you know. Thank you. I appreciate that. And also, um, you can hear some of my poetry because I know poetry is meant to be heard. So uh, if you want to check me out before you buy the book. It's on SoundCloud, and my name is Kina in the City. So definitely check it out if you want to hear some of the poems. Um, Some of my favorite poems are on SoundCloud right now. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll post a link to the SoundCloud. We'll put that on the social media so people can have it. All right. It was nice chatting with you all. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thank you. We enjoyed it. Thank you so much. And look into that polygamy thing for real now. Okay. Amen. <laughs> hey, if I, I'm telling you, if I can get two, if I can have two, I'm, I'm good. All right, I'm y'all have it. a good night. <laughs> all right. So, okay. Um, but you know what? You, you took offense to that polygamy thing. I just, I, I'm surprised when women suggested. You see your eyebrows I, go up? I did. I just was like, whoa. And then she's like, I was just playing. You're like, oh. 
<laughs> I, but, but you know what? You. I was worried. <laughs> I really was. I've been hearing that a lot. It's, I mean, it's just I've been hearing it it's a lot. only right. It's only right. Well, I think it's, you know, if it could go back both ways, I think mm. that's something we should be open she to. She said God. She very. I think, that's said the only, God. I think that's the only way it works for you. Is it, <laughs> if, if you feel like there's that equal, equal standing. That ain't what God said. And that's saying. one thing, but. That ain't what God said. Name one story in the Bible where God showed a you woman with a bunch I'm of husbands. You know I'm not talking to you about the Bible. She said, she watch, she Crystal said, just went a while out. Just I am not talking about the Bible with just you. Let her get her I a cup. I am not talking about She got to have a dick in these hands, Father. Oh, go my God. Oh, God. Oh, hey, God. do your thing. You, I'm and not judging so, you. Well, you know what? You can be free. No, 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 hold on. Wait a minute. This this has to come up now. Because I don't it, know. Be free. What is, the, what is your cap on dicks? How many dicks? It's too many. I think if a woman had two husbands, that would be awesome. I think two is enough. Same time or different nights? I don't think the same time. Okay. okay. Same house? So, so, look, so look. Maybe one in the basement and one in the upstairs. Who, what nigga gonna stay in the basement? It's like an in-law suite. <laughs> no, bro. Well, here's the thing, though, he right? Own she want a manly in man and a girly man. That's what it is. I don't is. want a girly man. No, no. no. no girly man. She want the big strong, because a lot of women no. want, want that no. duality a nice anyway. Guy and a thug. Right. Yeah. I really want a smart See, there guy. you go. No, I want a smart one, one that's very smart, intellectual. And, and ambitious And one that's like You know Very very like Hands on and physical Can fix everything okay. And build everything So my other yeah. question Then this is the Natural progression She gotta build a dick Most guys Want their Sister wives to You know mm-hmm. Mingle Mingle amongst each other I don't, I don't, I don't want any <laughs> well, Go ahead and tussle. I don't want any of that no. You want the niggas The niggas to tussle A little right. bit Go ahead and tussle Anyway Speaking But you know what we, we talk about rights And women wanting to be equal But this This um, I, We're obviously have to talk about the Leaving Neverland. I watched it. I don't know if you guys watched it, but in the aftermath of that, I think it's it's a bigger conversation than just Michael Jackson. Did Michael Jackson molest these two guys? Now, allegedly, allegedly, I'm with allegedly because uh, unlike the R. Kelly situation, these two gentlemen that were on the documentary, they have they have sworn under oath several times that that, that did not happen, and went on doing things with Michael Jackson, had a relationship with Michael Jackson. I think you posted something on our page where he's talking about Michael Jackson and how friendly they are. And, and I, you know, it's kind of a weird thing because you don't want to uh, accuse a victim, a possible victim, an alleged victim of lying or say what a victim should look like. But it is just very strange. It's just some very strange things happening. But I think it, it, it brings us to a bigger point. What did happen out of that is a lot of men started speaking out, just like they did years ago when Oprah had that special, about, you know, dealing with molestation and being molested. And there was a question raised. I posted this on my Facebook page, and there was a question raised, you know, when women are the... Because a lot of boys have been molested, some of them by men and then also some of them by women. But when women take advantage of a child, it's not seen as predatory. It's seen as, oh, he probably enjoyed it. How she looked. See, that is the insensitive remarks that keep toxic masculinity thriving and keep men So a woman molests a kid and that's toxic masculinity too? It is because men are not allowed to speak about it. They're not allowed to say that this was something that damaged me. They can't say this is something that damaged me. If Beautiful a, women damage men all the time at every age. That not, but they should not damage... That's we, toxic gro- femininity. No, a, a grown woman should not... Should not... Atta- uh, should not. Should not. I didn't say she should. How but should I'm saying look? the... F- I'm saying the idea that a boy who has been molested by a woman is not seen as a victim is a is a result of toxic masculinity. It is a victim. All right. It is a Look, victim. I've I've heard enough. It how she looks is very insensitive. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, Yet it is a fair question. It, I was trying. It is. <laughs> you got to know. That hey. is not, if, if he's 5 years old, 5 he is a little does not young. know the difference. 12 Stop he it. does not know the no, difference. However, absolutely not. women know what they're doing as coy as you play. <laughs> women like you know into a what they are doing. <laughs> but I'm just saying, what, what, you that know woman you needs are to fulfilling be, our fantasies. At five, no. No. Not at five. Not at five. But not, not much at seven. At five. Not right. at eight. Nine. Not at nine. Mm. Not at ten. No. Nine or ten. That no, no, no. Let me explain something to you. Let me explain something to you. The moment our ding ding gets hard, when that ding gets hard. Hey. Well, no, no, no. Let me bring up a point because that's one thing that was mentioned in the conversation over had. When a child is being molested, and this is a serious subject, guys. It is. When a child is being molested, their body can respond. So if 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 a man is stroking a little boy's penis, the penis will 
respond. And right. that doesn't mean that he wants that to happen. If right. you know, and and if a woman were to do it as well, to it be would fair, respond. though, to be fair though, and I mean, let's, we got We have to make sure that we're looking at all sides of it. To be fair. Nine or ten years old is when kids are watching porno now. Heavy. I'm not talking about a little bit of porn. I'm talking about the iPad. If you look, if but you not go, every child is. Going to the what search history. What was that history. video on the internet, a little boy crying because he was, I was trying to jack off. Oh, my God. Oh, dear go into No, no, no. I, I, I challenge you, parents. Go into your child's iPad at the, at the age of 10 he snuck and look through the porn. history. Not a thumb. You're not going to find much else. I mean, he can't watch all the porn, you're gonna, but he's not watching true. some no, porn. No, 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 you are wrong. Your child was not your watching, child porn, was watching porn. No, he was You're going to watch, this is what you're going to see in an in a, in a iPad. His history empty? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Private browsing. No, what you're going to see is you're going to see a whole bunch of tutorials on Transformers. No idea why. And maybe a- This is your history. A couple this of reactions. Hold on, no, no. A couple of reaction videos, which is the most ridiculous thing on the internet right Gotta now. Gotta be anime. Is Gotta react- include some reaction anime. Video. A couple of Yu-Gi-Oh, you, what is it, Yu-Gi-Oh or whatever that shit is. <laughs> a couple of those. But then you're going to see a whole <laughs> lot of porn. And I'm talking about some weird, depraved shit because they they don't even know what, what you're- What are you talking- What 10 That's how you porn gets you. Do you remember You remember when the internet came out when you like had to get on Facebook with a college email yeah, and right. stuff like that? Like- you used to get sent videos and be like, some girl's going to screw a horse. And you'd be like, oh my God, I have to see. I have to see. No, I'm going to click this. I have to see this have woman have it? sex right, with a horse. Right now, I kind of want to see that. I'm like, whoa. And then you'd be like, oh my God. That's she's awful. Having sex. Like, right. But, it's, but why it's is it enjoyable, like you think. though? Let me send it to somebody else, huh? Why is it enjoyable? It's not about enjoyable. Just, it's like, what? Yeah, I want to see mm. that. That's amazing that you guys think because women are like. So you've never seen it. It's the same. No, I've never seen it. It's no. the same reason y'all watch Doctor Pimple Popper. I don't watch that. That's disgusting. What is that? I don't watch that. It's it's I don't a know show. Who, who a, watches that? But they have there's issues. There's a skin doctor who you know how people have like big lumps that's and disgusting. gross. That's, disgusting. And, that's disgusting. And, disgusting. I don't even like to like you know I saw on, on this uh, show where they were talking about how couples should have this full transparency and the one guy needed his I guess something on his face a pimple popped I don't I don't ever want to be that transparent I don't want you to pop anything on me and I don't want to pop anything no, on you. No, that's that's love. That's no, love. That's not you, that you can go to a you dig in each other's no, face. That's you disgusting. Dig in your boogers. So I am not. You built, get comfortable not when you're in love. So no, okay. I don't do that. So I don't do any of that. the point I was trying to make though was that I think ten year olds and maybe just a little bit older than ten year olds are fully invested in the idea of sex with anyone. Well, first of all, ten. It, first of all, every ten year old is different. Let's that's just true. acknowledge that. That's true. Every ten year old is different, and I think that an adult, just like I mean, the issue with R. Kelly is it because it's it's heterosexual sex, but it is a grown man approaching a child and 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 using the fact that they are a grown person right. to manipulate that child. Yeah. And so I think that if it's a woman, and even if the ten year old says, you know, wow, she's pretty. He is not mentally able to handle that, and it introduces sex in a very strange way. There are ten-year-olds who have had sex, ten-year-old and ten-year-old. That's not a crime. They need their behinds whooped, but it's not the same as a twenty-seven-year-old oh, yeah. with a That's grown right. woman Absolutely. body descending upon a small ten-year-old. Like that is mentally. Traumatic, yeah. you know that is that is absolutely predatorial. Yeah, and I I don't think I, I after posting this, you know, I had several guys reach out to me and share that they had gone through molestation, which was amazing for me to to get just from posting that on Facebook. But what you know, one was molested. publicly. They came out publicly. No, they oh. no, they had a conversation with me. But I'm just saying it's just, and I had I've had seven other guys tell me that they've been molested. Like there's a, this is happening a so lot. Nine in total. You know of nine people that have been molested. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, when you said uh, one out of six, mm-hmm. I immediately was like more. Yeah. Only one out of six are willing to say something about That's it. That's a big number, though. That's a really because with women they say it's one out of four. I don't but believe I'm, that though. That I just that's amazing. But but the crazy thing is like for me to know. For nine guys to have told me over like a ten year period, that's shocking. And I'm I wasn't, you know, these guys that told me today I'm I'm not I'm you know Facebook friends with them and one of them I'm you know good friends with, but. That's just that just lets you know there's a lot more. How are they saying it affects them? Um, very much. Uh, one of them is in therapy and and just now able to kind of deal with it. Um, near forty and just now acknowledging it. Never has shared it ever to anyone. And so the documentary. I don't know if the issue if that did happen with Michael Jackson. What I do know is that he had some perverted thing happening with him for him to be obsessed with little white boys. That was not normal. Now, what extent that went to, I don't know. But I do know that that relationship between an adult man and little white boys was very, very, very dangerous and not normal. 
but the at least the conversation is causing people to come out and talk about the fact that men are often preyed upon and don't feel like they have a, a space to be a victim. There's really not a space for a man to be a victim. With R. Kelly, we're like, oh my God, those girls, he's hurting those girls. You see this little girl, she's 14, this 14 year old girl. But we don't look at little boys with the same compassion, you know, that I think we should because they become men and we don't see men with and 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 inner I guess have the same empathy and compassion for them and that's wrong. Well let me ask you a question. So and and this is a question I've asked you before. If a dude admitted to you that he had a, a homosexual experience in college or whatever, mm-hmm. you're done with him. You can't be with him as as a as in a couple, right? I, I said that um don't go back on it now. I said that before, and I, I, I but I, I have you know to kind of go back is, right? on it. Wait, but wait, wait, wait. I have to go back on you it because I didn't really, I did not know at the time that I said that. I didn't under, I didn't have an understanding because I feel like I understand more now. After I mean, that, I was told that that happened like that was like one of the first conversations I had with someone. A guy that I went on a date with told me that he had been molested by his pastor mm-hmm. from the time he was like eleven to like into his teens. And I was very much afraid of it. And he's not. I mean, he's married and he's, you know, he's not. But I I was ignorant. I will admit that. Now, I mean, you could be with someone. I could have, there could have been guys that I've gone out with that have had that I just didn't know, you know? But what I'm asking specifically, though, is because of how adamant you were and how most women are in their homophobia about a guy that decided one time to try something, Mm -hmm. fuck him, he's canceled. I'm asking, is it the same when it comes to a guy who, against his will, had to happen? Or went to prison and had something happen? But you know what? I think it's actually, I think it's actually different for that person because if, if you were, were too long, too, too young to pursue someone for sex, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And this is how sex is defined for you, then that, I, I'm sure that there are people who are, that are walking around right now who believe that they are gay, but it's because they there's the, sex was introduced to them that way. by someone of the same sex. I believe that. I definitely believe that. I think, that- and then they're happy in in uh, heterosexual relationships. Yeah, but it was introduced to them that way. So you see how that? Yeah, I think I think that that's why that is such a bad thing to do. Because even if you are introduced, regardless of how which. Sex, what sexual preference it is, it gives the child an un, it, it kills their innocence, and they have a perverted sense of what sex is supposed to be. I don't know though. I'm, I'm in a, you know, this may be devil's advocate, but have you ever hugged a man? Yes. Okay. Have you ever hugged a woman that you're intimate with? Yes. Both hugs, right? Yes. But very different. You don't. Very. You wouldn't. You would not consider those to be the same thing at all. Even though they're both hugs, they're both very different. Is it not possible to compartmentalize that and recognize that you were wronged? And that that's so. not what sex is? I don't think so. Because I think when you're young, I think just like a, a child feels like when their parents go through divorce, it's their fault. Like, that makes no sense. Yeah, but after you're grown, mm-hmm. though. But uh, no, a lot of people carry those issues in. I can admit and be very transparent about this. My my dad was on drugs. I know and understand that he wasn't able to give me the love that he, that he may have wanted to, but I still interpret his actions as rejection against me, him not loving me. And it took me, and I still deal with that. So I think, I don't think, I think that what happens to you as a child leaves a very big imprint on you. And I don't think that um, we're always able to make the rational transition to realizing, oh, that wasn't the case, you know, because there's, I mean, there are kids who were abandoned by, you know, parents. I was watching my favorite show now, Married at First Sight, but there was a guy that had been Abandoned by his mom. Lifetime. It, it's a great show. And he had a fear of women abandoning him. I don't think that we let go of that. It's in our psyche. It's like part of our formative years. So it's difficult to move forward from that. So when sex is introduced that way, I think it can just be very dangerous. And the problem is a lot of times men don't share it. So they have issues with intimacy, either being very disconnected to it or one of my friends that had gone through it, he just wanted to have sex with as many women as possible to prove that he wasn't gay to himself because he was kind of always afraid that that could be an issue, you know? So he kind of needed to do that. It's just, it's the worst thing that you can do to a child, I think, you know? Can't argue that. And yeah. I, I just hope that people, um, maybe the documentary will help people to kind of get help, especially, you know, guys that are struggling with it. I said that, but also not being married is so the worst thing you do to a child. I agree too. I agree. I agree. It's, it leaves kids with very big deficits in their emotional development. 
we're using like big words and everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it does. I it's mean, true, I just, yeah. What you the best thing that you can do for a child is to love their mom and to stay with them, and vice versa. Treat their dad, treat their father with respect, and then that home. But there's, but that's such a well. I, okay, so see, no, I, I'm not. I'm not gonna. And, and I'm, I'm. This is personal too. I don't know if you necessarily have to be with their mom. But you have to have a mom in the house. Oh, okay. Would so you agree with that? As long as you're, I think both, the mother and the father. <laughs> right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. For a guy, your 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 job, you you and your your ex wife or your your baby mom may not be able to see eye to eye to keep a relationship together. But that child needs to have a mom and dad in the house. Whether or not it's his biological mom or her biological mom, there does need to be that energy there. Right. There's definitely. I, I recognize that there's an, an emotional balance, and and I, and Terry Crews actually come under fire, and he apologized for saying that. I mean, essentially saying that their fathers were important. But I think in the home there's a balance, and you can see it in the kids. The kids respond to mm -hmm. uh, the kids respond to mom a certain way, mm -hmm. and the children respond to dad a certain way. Right. Right. They respond to auntie a certain way. Mm -hmm. They respond to grandma a certain way, et cetera, et cetera. And so when there's the uh, an overload of feminine energy in the home, of course that child takes on some feminine characteristics, even if they're a little boy. Or they work very dif diligently against that because not, it, it, to me, little boys either go one or one or two ways. They can become feminine, but a lot of them don't and they become very... Um, Homongers. Right. So almost yeah. like I got to prove that I'm not, you know I mean? I don't, mm -hmm. I don't, they, they, it just depends. But I, I think, you know, I, everybody speaks from their situation. I think you do the best that you can. But at the point that you don't have that balance, you just have to do the best that you can. But I do think that kids do need both sides. Um, it, it, it's just painful because a lot of times when women are trying to get that side, that is usually, that is a lot of times where the abuse comes from. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, my mom, one of the reasons my mom never dated and never had guys around me because she was molested by her, her mother's boyfriend. Oh, wow. So she was afraid to, you know, introduce that. One of the guys I spoke with today was molested by his mother's boyfriend's brother. So that, you you know, women have to be women and men because, you know, men have left their son with a babysitter that's molested their son. You just have to be careful. And I think, you know, it's it's... You are lucky if you find someone that is willing and able to be a parent to your child. That doesn't that's not something people should take lightly. Right. That's not something that happens all the time. Everyone is not privy to that. Those are special people that are able to come in and really be that other parent and to see that child as their own. There are a lot of stepfathers and stepmothers that don't ever treat that child like their own. And that causes more issues of rejection and right. You know, there's two dude, two guys now exactly. that didn't accept me. Yeah, or mm -hmm. women. It's, it's it's horrible. So before we wrap the whole, the guys, the seven nine guys that have come out to you, I, the, provide so for the people who are watching right now. Right. Provide them a little ray of sunshine. What is it? What is it that that you've seen a, a trend that you've seen in those nine guys mm -hmm. who are the ones who are getting over it? Like besides therapy, is there something else that they're doing, or is it just therapy? Well, no. The, all, the, there was only one that was in therapy. You know, the other. The other, some of the other ones are just, I think they start to realize it later in life because these people were all between like 35 and 45. Well, no, one was 21, but he was still struggling with his sexuality very much. He came out, that came out to me and said he was gay and he had been molested by someone in his church. But I think that, you know, if you really, if you're trying to better yourself, um, that you can... Just being 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 able to kind of acknowledge what you've gone through and realizing there's no shame in that. You know, I hope that men are able to do that. Then realize there's there's no shame because a lot of times people carry around a feeling that I did something or maybe somebody sent something on me. And um, I think realizing that you're not to blame for it and then feeling comfortable to talk to someone. You may not, a lot of guys don't want to go to therapy, but maybe find a friend. I've been that listening ear and I'm, I feel honored actually that people would trust me with that pain, you know, and and that they found a safe place there, I, I I really feel honored. And I think there are more people out there that would do that. Can I can I stick you with something pointy? I don't want you to. I think <laughs> I think it needs to be done though, because the problem here is that we spoke last week about how women emasculate men. Mm -hmm. I think that what I asked you the question about how you were saying that a guy who goes to a party or in college decided to try something else, mm -hmm. the way that you guys respond to that. 
mm-hmm. plays a really big part in why guys are not willing to admit to being hurt or touched as kids because I believe that. it's the same it's the same thing. Right. I believe that. So maybe maybe also besides the fact that we need to just like maybe get some of these people the hell out of there yeah. in these households that shouldn't be in these households Pay whether, more they're, attention whether they're to, in prison or whatever. Yeah. I think also if women want to help save more guys lives did we say we wanted to do that? Shouldn't we though? I, I, I thought that's know. the point of this was to get those okay. to get people to be able to speak openly about what's going on, so they can provide be yeah. provided assistance. I do okay. to get over it. Yeah, that requires you guys to be bigger than that and say, you know what? Yeah, you sucked a dick in college. <laughs> it ain't the end of the world. You always find a way to bring this back around, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> but you know it's what? I think thing. I'm not done. I'll be back in a second. <laughs> no, I, I think it, it it leans towards kind of what you were talking about for. Uh, a moment ago in order for men to be to meet women's expectations of what they're looking for in a man or what they think a man should be in some way compartmentalizing it blocking it out and moving forward part of that means that you've healed right because you you've you've shut it all right it's not stopping me and then it's not uh, prohibiting me from being able to move forward and to that's do things. That's not healing, though. <laughs> that's not healing. That is that is covering something up and allowing you to to. Basically, it's like your brain will will allow you to do what you have to do to survive. But that doesn't mean that you've healed. It's kind of like when your leg when you break your leg and you don't get it set. It's not healed. It, it, it merges broke. back together, and then and you have to broke. broke it. You have to break it again in order for it to heal properly. So I think that you know I I can. It, well, all of us know that we've done something to get by, but at at some point, once you've gotten by, that that pain comes right back. And you know, once you've accomplished all these things, all these pe- none of these people were bums. They're all very you know working and successful in, in their life and doing their things. But so they have compartmentalized. They have compartmentalized, right. and but it it has shown up in various areas of their life to where they can't really keep running from it right. because eventually you will not have any more boxes to put it in. Mm. So my next thing then I'm circling back The next thing Isn't, isn't it time we cancel church? Come on man How did you all get there from all here? All these damn priests <laughs> touching All these priests touching little boys All these pastors as Eddie Long and these little dudes It's time It's time to cancel that whole shit And let's try Find something else We need a new Jesus You just did that on purpose You just brought that back around Like you share tried and subscribe to <laughs> I, I want you guys to share the show For, for anybody That was very whole tap of you Beigeman Hey man Come on man Hey We canceling stuff Let's cancel hey, just, Black on Black you're crime. just welcoming let's, them. Let's cancel the Chicago shooters. Let's let's well, cancel some real shit. I'm gonna buy you a beer. Ain't you a Jamaican strike? Red Black strike. Beer. Yeah. <laughs> Red strike. Let's cancel monogamy while we're at it. Let's do that. <laughs>